everyone, my name's Lawrence Hooker and I'm a technical consultant here at Excitec. I'd like to just spend a few minutes talking and demonstrating generative design to you. We're going to be looking at a new project Autodesk are coming up with called Project Refinery. And this allows us to use the power of Dynamo and design tools to go through various different generations of each design. So if we have a look at the looming problem we've got, by 2050, we're going to have 10 billion people on planet Earth. That's going to require us to construct and design 13,000 new buildings every single day. We're going to need enough linear infrastructure to wrap around the world 30 times per year. What this equates to is we're going to need to design and construct this infrastructure much smarter. We're going to need to make much better use of resources, not just our natural resources on planet Earth, but also our resources as human beings. Now, when we look at the process of going through different design iterations, it's always a trade-off between time and money. So, of course, we could sit here for years on end coming up with various different design alternatives and iterations, but of course we haven't got that much time to come up with the designs we require. What that means is we could miss some really good designs simply because we just didn't have that time. What about if we did? Well, in this example, I'm going to show you a demonstration of Autodesk Project Refinery. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a simple massing study for some towers. So you can see here we've got a few sketches of what the towers might look like. So we know we need a floor area greater than 30,000 square metres. We have a limited footprint to uh, design these towers on. We want to monitor the tower height. As the tower gets higher, the cost will get higher. Also, with facade areas, we want to monitor that. If the area gets too big, it, again, there's a bigger cost, so we want to try and minimise that. And we want to monitor the core size as well. Okay, so... This is a screenshot of Project Refinery with that same design that we've just talked about. And you can see here that Project Refinery as a product is very, very simple. We have some studies on the left hand side here. We have different graphing opportunities over here that we can use. So at the minute, what I'm doing is I'm plotting the facade area down the Y axis over here, the total floor area along the X axis. And then I have something called the tower height cost index. Basically, as the bubble gets bigger over here, it means that the cost is higher. And then what we, what's happening here is we're using the power of Dynamo and Project Refinery to iterate through lots and lots of designs and come up with the optimal. So let's take a look at this in the product itself. OK, so here we are inside Revit and I've started a new project. I've already got Dynamo running and if I just maximise Dynamo here, I'll just quickly take you through this graph that we've got. So you can see in the background here that I have a massing study of our tower. And essentially here in the green uh, group here, you can see that I can start to control things uh, like parameter widths and lengths. Also, we can control things like the tower height. Okay. Now, obviously, as I start to go through some of these re um, relevant data sets here, the tower in the background is responding. So this section of the dynamo graph here is generating the tower and creating the floors and so on. But the important point as far as refinery goes is here we have some outputs. So you can see here I have my facade area. I also have my total floor area, my footprint, my cost index. So I'm creating a cost index and just using some Python scripts really at the minute to work out the total cost for the tower. I've also got something called a structure type as well for my output. Now, these outputs are really quite important because these are how Project Refinery is going to make its decision. So let's go ahead and start up Project Refinery. So on the view menu, we can select Refinery. And here we're going to select a new study. OK, so when we create a new study, there's various different generation methods that we could use here. I want to optimize the design. Yep. So we can then declare the inputs that I would like to use. So this is simply using my Dynamo inputs that I've told to be inputs inside Dynamo. So I'm going to use all of my inputs. That's great. That's what I want to do. If I go to outputs in here, what I want to do is I want to now minimize my facade area. I'll probably want to maximize my total floor area. The footprint I would ideally like to minimize. 
The structure type, in this case, I'm just going to ignore. And you can see here I've got my tower height cost index, and I want to minimize that. OK, so once we've actually gone through and set those things up, back in here, and we'll now generate our designs. Now, I haven't changed the speed of this video. This is actually working in real time. So what's going to now happen is Refinery is going to start to generate these various different design alternatives. On the left hand side here, you can see that we've got the study and now we can start to see some designs come through. So let's just let this uh, complete. As it's doing it here, you can see I can start to scroll through the designs and then I've got various different pages I can work with as well. We have two different types of graphing we can show here. I've got a scatter plot, which you're seeing over here, or we have something called the um, parallel coordinates over here. We can then decide how we're going to plot the information. So here I've got various different axes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, right, well, what I'd like to do is I'd like to see the footprint of my design on the left hand side. And on the X axis over here, I want to see my total floor area, which is quite important to me. The size of the scatter plot can be determined by these various different outputs as well. So what I'd like to do here is perhaps show something called the tower height cost index. And the color we can change as well. So I'll use that on the cost index. OK, now I'm ordering the design at the minute by its facade area, but I can do that however I like. For example, I could go to the tower height cost index and then all of the designs will be ordered around that. And of course, we can toggle uh, between ascending or descending. We can manually just go through some of these designs and just take a look at the, uh, the various different graphics that we're seeing here. But what's really powerful with this is we can actually decide to pick a particular study from one of these uh, plots here and then see the design. So I'm going to pick this one here, which is the biggest um, blob on the scatter chart. And what will happen is, as soon as I actually pick that, you can then see that Dynamo models that particular version. If I pick another version over here, again, that new version will be modelled. Now you can see I've got some colour code in here, so when it goes red, the actual height of the tower is getting a little bit too high in there. So you can see here that I've achieved a fairly big floor area, but I've got quite, a, um, quite an expense if you like, looking at the footprint of the tower there. Now, if you want to have a much larger footprint, we could go perhaps up here somewhere, and you would assume, obviously, the height of the tower is reduced, but then the footprint gets bigger. So the idea here is we can start to go through and pick optimal designs based on our outputs from our design. So once we've chosen or uh, selected a design that meets some of our criteria, what we can then do is simply then go ahead and create that inside Revit. Now, at the minute, if I go into my uh, Revit model here, you can just see that I've got my uh, Dynamo geometry being previewed here. But of course, as you uh, well know, Dynamo could then go ahead and generate the floors, um, the floor slabs, the various different levels and the facade as required. So there's one example of Project Refinery working with a massing study. Okay, hope you found that useful.